We've only got to look at what's happening in Europe now, right, to know the whole thing's coming crashing down. Doesn't matter how many wind and solar plants you put in, you still need that synchronised solid backup power, don't you? Isn't that what's happening in Europe? Yeah, I, I saw something very dystopian actually on social media just yesterday and a British game show was giving away, um, they were offering contestants to pay their energy bills. Energy mm. bills are so out of control that you can go on a game show and win payment of your energy bills. I mean, that's dystopian. We're, you know, in 2022, we should not be worrying about how we're going to pay our energy bills. I mean, we've got all of the technology. It seems to me that the real barrier here is ideology. Mm. And it's not, it's not just energy illiteracy. I would argue that there's something called a naturalistic fallacy going on. Some people are inherently skeptical of anything that's not natural. Uh, and particularly people who are in the environmentalist movement. They're suspicious of technological innovation that comes from human creativity. Mm. And I think that's the real barrier here. And there's, there's a lack of understanding and knowledge that civilization is built upon human ingenuity, human creativity, and we've made the world a better place with our intellect. Mm. And we can keep making it a better place with our intellect. But, you know, if we want to fantasize about going back to some natural landscape where, you know, we just have to rely on wind and solar to power modern civilization, I mean, that's just going to fail. Exactly. And we've been locked into this. You, I'm sure, found it as frustrating as I have probably for 20 years or more on this topic, locked into this, this polarized battle where people take, you know, sort of highly... Um, ideological stands. Uh, but look, surely, I mean, I want to hold out some hope now. I, please tell me I'm right, but if I'm not, tell me I'm not right. Hmm. we surely in a place now where, as we said earlier, we now have uh, a cross-party agreement that the target for Australia is zero, uh, net zero in 2050. Not only that, it's, it's locked into law. And so, you know, an incoming government must either come in with a mandate to change that, and good luck with that, I say, in the current political environment, or it's got to meet that target. So the question, surely now the, the argument is over about whether we do something uh, about carbon emissions. It, you know, that, that's been settled uh, for better or worse. The question is how? Yeah. So yeah. on that basis, shouldn't we all be on the same page? Well, why the argument, you know, why should there any more be any more deep philosophical or moral divide between us and, say, Greenpeace on this? Surely we're both, we're all in the same game, aren't we? Well, unfortunately, in this country, we have a moratorium on nuclear power. And uh, that le misguided legislation has been in place for 24 years. And so we are, we are paralysed on the issue of nuclear power because of some outdated legislation that we have. And unfortunately, not just because of the legislation, because environmental activists themselves oppose nuclear power for reasons that have been debunked for some time now. There's a fear around waste, which has been debunked several times. There's fear about accidents, again, debunked. Um, so there are some misguided fears that do need to be alleviated, but I would just argue that People my generation and younger aren't as scared as as scared of nuclear power as perhaps uh, older generations, and that might be because uh, we didn't grow up with the fear of the bomb. <laughs> mm. And there's there's a, a bit of a conflation between, I think, for baby boomers, there's a bit of a conflation between nuclear power and nuclear weapons, which doesn't need to to be there.